In 2140, women have become the dominant gender and taken control of society, allowing them to push humanity into fast progress with discipline, peace, and great technological advances. Instead of living in cities, they've created a colony in the countryside, and an AI housekeeper takes care of all the chores like cooking, checking on the owner's health, and making new clothing for them. There isn't any kind of violence and fines are given for minor offenses like using the wrong can for the trash. Thanks to all this, the average life expectancy is now 150. Their currency is social points, which they earn by being obedient and lose by misbehaving. There are also breaks taken just to have a hug. History teacher Rada tells the class about how the world was when men dominated society, they only brought hate and violence that resulted in wars and climate change. Then in 2030 during a conflict between the United States and North Korea, some scientists developed a virus to destroy all the men in the US military. However the virus quickly spread to the rest of the world and ended up killing 99% of the male population. That's when women took over and reversed all the damage done by men, making Earth a better place to live in. Nowadays male babies are extremely rare and when one is born, he's sent to the slums. The male population is seen as apes for having little intelligence, being dirty, and only being interested in intercourse and violence. They also only live around 30 years. Mila is curious about the slums and Rada takes the girls on a class trip. The slums happen to be old cities, which have very primitive technology and access to only the basic necessities. In these slums lives Jera, a guy who is desperate to do the naughty with a woman. There's also Baron, the leader of the slums. He wants to start an uprising against the women and often gives speeches to get the other guys to support him. Today's speech gets interrupted by the arrival of Rada and her class, and the men get angry when they realize they're being treated like a zoo. One of them pulls down his pants as a prank, but a girl misunderstands it as a greeting and responds by lifting her skirt. The men are starting to get excited, so Rada sends the girls back to the bus, only to notice Mila is missing. Rada rushes to find Mila and finds her staring at a duck because she never saw an animal before since they're forbidden in the colony. Jera suddenly startles them by killing the animal, and when their screams get the attention of a guy, Jera immediately hides them. Once the man is gone, Jera kisses Rada, who panics and blows her emergency whistle. The noise makes Jera's head hurt, but it also gives away their location and soon the men find them. They're taken to see Baron, who decides to organize a slapping competition and the winner gets to do it with the women. Wanting to protect them, Jera enters the competition and gets nervous when his opponent turns out to be a giant. Jera's slap is weak and does nothing to the man, who immediately reacts with his own slap. Luckily he's slow and Jera quickly dodges him, causing Baron to get knocked out instead. While everyone is distracted, Rada and Mila run back to their bus, which has a force field that keeps the guys away from reaching them. While the girls escape on the bus, Jera runs away too because Baron's men want to punish him. Sometime later, a bus stops by the slums to get some batteries and after it takes off, Jera reveals to be hiding in the battery barrels. He meets the bus owner Yuli, who works as a seed keeper, meaning he's one of the few privileged men allowed to impregnate women. The bus is on autopilot and can't stop, so Yuli agrees to let Jera out when they make it to the colony. While they chat, Yuli drinks a lot of Jera's moonshine and gets so drunk that he ends up jumping out of the bus into the forest. Still determined to escape from Baron's men, Jera puts on Yuli's spare uniform and pretends to be a new seed keeper. Moments later, Jera makes it to the colony two hills, where an invisible barrier opens up to let him in. A woman gives him a tour of the place and Jera is surprised to see how many girls are excited to have him around. That night on live TV, Jera bites the holy apple and takes an oath to reproduce healthy and smart babies. He wants to start working immediately, so he's taken to the reproduction chamber and meets a woman he isn't attracted to at all. His disappointment increases when suddenly a pipe is connected to his groin and starts milking him. To keep himself distracted, he thinks about Rada, while Rada also thinks of him too while using a toy. The next day, Jera is taken to the reproduction base, where seed keepers are taken care of by beautiful women. Jera is happy to spend the whole day being pampered with good food and massages, but all this attention causes him to get stiff. He rushes to the bathroom to find relief in his hand, but this causes an alarm to go off. It turns out that both self-relief and intercourse are illegal in the colony. Meanwhile Rada and her family are at the local court because Mila told the authorities about what happened during the class trip, and now they must check if Rada and Mila are guilty. Rada is nervous and tells her best friend Ia about the kiss, but Ia assures nobody can know about it. Mila's mother Vera tries to blame Rada for everything, so Rada retaliates by saying they went to the slums because Mila asked to, showing a recording from her AI as proof. It seems Rada may win, but Ia cuts in to tell everyone about the kiss. All the women are disgusted and Rada is punished with 80 hours of community service while Ia is given 20 social points as a reward. Back to Yuli, he makes his way to the slums and gets help from Jera's grandfather, who tells him to keep his identity a secret. Afterward Yuli is introduced to Baron, who immediately can tell Yuli is keeping secrets and breaks his finger. Baron also asks for his pants, and when he takes them off, everyone is impressed by his manhood. Now Baron is the second biggest guy in the area. Later after getting a haircut, Yuli is approached by one of the few women in the slums, who offers to treat his finger. 
Jealous, Baron tells the giant that Yuli is trying to steal his wife, so the giant challenges Yuli to a slap fight. As all the locals gather to watch, the giant opens the fight with an impressive slap that knocks Yuli down, but to everyone's surprise, he quickly stands up again. Then Yuli slaps the giant back with shocking strength, knocking him out. Now he gets to do the dirty with the giant's wife. In the colony, the seed keepers are taken out for a walk and told about all the rules they must follow, like having to ask permission to fart and enter a capsule to do it. Eventually they make it to a statue of Greta Thunberg, who is seen as a goddess here. While everyone is distracted praying, Jera gets tired of all the rules and convinces some guys to go have fun. There's access to the sea nearby, so they rush there to catch fish. At that moment the others notice that Jera's legs aren't shaved and that he has a lighter, which are both forbidden. Instead of suspecting his identity, they think it's part of Jera's rebel persona and are impressed. The group has lots of fun together in the water and starts a fire to cook their fish, but the smoke triggers a fire alarm and a fake cloud appears above to rain on them. When they return to the center, they're informed their punishment will be a tour to the Museum of Patriarchy for re-education. Afterward, Jera tries to make a cocktail, and the gesturing causes the self-pleasure alarm to go off. Then he tries with his other hand and nothing happens, confirming it's the ring they're forced to wear that reads their movements. Now the guys can get naughty in private with their own hands. The next day, Jera is getting a massage when suddenly he discovers his caretaker is Rada, who was sent here to serve as punishment. Shocked, Jera pretends he hurt his ankle and is immediately taken away. Later Jera's rebel group is taken to the Museum of Patriarchy, where they're put through several presentations that teach him how things should be according to the new rules, women are the superior race, men should be dominated, and intercourse is disgusting. While the guys are indoctrinated, Rada and her grandmother Zoya watch from afar, laughing at how clumsy Jera is. Zoya mentions that Jera is cute and asks Rada to protect his identity instead of reporting him. Once the guys return to the reproduction base, Jera teaches the others that all they saw is a lie and that feeling desire is normal. One of the men gets too excited with the idea and asks Rada to undress, but before things can escalate, Jera cuts in and sends the guy away. Rada is grateful but she still tells Jera to leave the city or she'll blow his cover. In the slums, Yuli has become very popular. Thinking he's losing power, Baron orders his right-hand man Krissa and a bunch of his men to kill Yuli. The group asks Yuli to come with them to look for supplies, which is supposed to be a trap. However Yuli impresses everyone by being great at the job and finding lots of food. Krissa tries attacking him anyway, but his hits do no damage. Suddenly they're found by an enemy gang called the Squirrels, yet Yuli scares them all away in seconds. Krissa and the other men are even more impressed so they decide not to kill him. Meanwhile it's revealed that Baron is having a secret affair with Vera, who learns about what happens in the slums from him. After a night of passion, she decides to look at the profiles of the latest seed keepers and realizes the real Yuli has been replaced with a primate. She immediately sends a warning alarm throughout the colony, and a terrified Jera has no choice but to run away. However when he reaches the borders, the invisible barrier blocks him, so now he must hide. As he sneaks around, Jera finds Rada and asks her for help in exchange for all the times he saved her. At that moment cops start arriving in the area, so Rada tries to run away with Jera only to be seen by Ia. In the slums, Baron returns to find Yuli alive and demands an explanation from his men. Krissa points out that Yuli has saved lives so they want him around, then Yuli says the slums also deserve a democracy. Baron refuses to hand over power, so Yuli gathers the locals around his window to start a riot, demanding to do things right. Nervous, Baron asks Vera for advice and she tells him to make the crowd play by his rules. In the end, Baron agrees to have an election to let people choose their new leader. After Yuli leaves, Baron asks Krissa to compete in the election as well, hoping that dividing the votes among his own men will make Yuli lose. That night, all the residents cast their votes in a toilet, and Baron relieves himself in it to muddle the results. His trick in the end doesn't work, he only has his own vote, while Krissa wins the election with 18. Yuli only got 16 because many men still distrust an outsider. In private, Krissa agrees to be Baron's puppet. Back to Rada and Jera, they end up hiding at Zoya's house. When Vera's assistant comes to inspect the house, Zoya hides the duo in the closet with her illegal pet. As Vera's assistant starts searching the house, the cat sneezes and blows up their cover. Before they can get arrested, Zoya hits the assistant in the head to knock her out. Next Zoya brings out her old bike and tells Jera to use it to cross the invisible barrier because only objects going over 80 km per hour can penetrate it. At that moment Rada's mother Elena catches them red-handed, so Zoya tackles her to the ground to let the duo escape. The duo gets on the bike and drives it to the borders as fast as possible, which luckily works and allows them to go through the barrier. The impact destroys the bike and their clothes, but, thankfully they've brought spares. Then they light a fire to spend the night in the forest. The next morning, Jera catches a squirrel for breakfast, but Rada has lived a vegetarian life and is so shocked by the sight of a roasted animal that she screams. This gets the attention of some men nearby who immediately come after them, so Rada and Jera have to run away as the guys shoot arrows at them. Unfortunately Rada trips over a broken tree and hurts her leg, and this delay allows the men to capture them. 
The duo is taken to the slums, where Baron tries to get too close to Rada and Jera stops him. Other men want a chance to be with Rada too since they're supposed to be democratic now, so Krissa decides to hold a slap competition and the winner will get Rada. Afterward Baron lies to Vera, saying he hasn't seen the fugitives. Sometime later, Yuli visits Rada to try to convince her that the slums are great, however Rada shares all the privileges they have in two hills and ends up changing Yuli's mind with a hug. They decide they'll run away together after everyone goes to bed. Outside, Krissa makes the locals vote for a new constitution, only reading aloud the cool parts while keeping the rule about transferring leadership to Baron in two weeks a secret. Everyone gets excited and votes in favor of it without knowing the truth. In the middle of the night, Yuli meets with Rada and they wait for everyone to fall asleep. He shares a drink with her that immediately makes her feel dizzy and tries to take advantage of her, revealing he doesn't want to leave after all. By the time Jera arrives, he finds a crying Yuli and learns Rada kicked him in the groin to escape. While Jera runs to find Rada, Yuli goes to confront Baron and Krissa, announcing that he'll be the new leader from now on. After lots of searching, Jera finds Rada sitting by the fire in the forest, so he gently approaches her by saying he won't do anything to her if she doesn't want to. Then he shares some fried chicken, and Rada is shocked by how good it tastes. Suddenly Rada theorizes that if eating meat is so good then intercourse must be even better, so she agrees to do it with Jera. When they're about to start, they're interrupted by Elena and two guards who immediately arrest them. During the trip back to the colony, Jera is shot with a tranquilizer gun. Once they make it to Two Hills, Elena asks Vera to forgive Rada, offering to hand in Jera in exchange so Vera can punish him in public. Thinking that this will be good for her political career, Vera agrees. Afterward the council holds a meeting and decides to execute Jera. Later, Jera wakes up tied to a chair. The women give him a special injection and ask him for his last wish, so Jera requests to say goodbye to Rada. Touched by these words, Rada runs to him and kisses him. Unfortunately this is only a vision he's having in a confinement room, where very advanced machines are being used to keep track of his thoughts. His fantasies are played on TV so everyone can learn how nasty men are, and the illusions even show ads. Meanwhile Ia goes to see Rada and shows her Jera's vision of their kiss, causing Rada to go to the other seed keepers and convince them to help her rescue Jera. Soon they all arrive at the council building to ask for Jera's freedom. At the same time, Jera is getting his second injection and sees a vision of a glowing wheel that decides his fate will be becoming a plastic bag so he's free to fly. Seeing this, the other seed keepers call out the women's cruelty and threaten to boycott the production of seed until Jera is released. Vera comes out and tries to prove that Jera is a primate who doesn't belong in civilization, but nobody believes her because his thoughts are gentle, like the vision he's now having of Rada and himself in the ending of Titanic. Not wanting to lose the seed production, Vera offers to free Jera but only if someone takes responsibility for him and his future actions, and Rada volunteers to do so, taking an oath on an apple. Elena does the same thing to protect her daughter. Afterward Rada goes to the execution chamber and finally brings Jera out to then take him to a guest house. Jera tries to use the chance to get busy with her, but Rada walks away because she isn't in the mood after all this mess. Moments later, Rada comes back and kisses Jera before they finally get busy. However as soon as they're done, Rada goes to the bathroom to use a toy to finish. Jera follows her and tries to apologize for having failed her, only to suddenly wake up and realize it was all a dream. While Jera tries to understand all the machines around the house, Rada and Elena come to explain a few things. They've got him 300 social points in his ring, if he breaks the rules, he'll lose points, and if he reaches zero all of them will be punished. Jera immediately loses 13 points for not finishing his breakfast and using foul language. Rada and Jera leave together for the day and walk around the colony, where Jera keeps being discriminated against for being a primate. They end up joining a volleyball game, but Jera's competitive spirit isn't normal around here and causes the girls to fight each other. Meanwhile Elena decides to run for colony leader in the upcoming election and starts by buying the seed keeper's votes. She brings them lots of gifts and promises to make intercourse legal if she wins, showing them her chest to prove it. In the slums, Yuli finds a letter from Jera, who explains he ran away with Rada. Furious, Yuli breaks a table and gets drunk. While fooling around in Baron's office, he finds a weird lock and destroys it to find the ring Baron used to communicate with Vera. Suddenly the power goes out and everyone goes to Yuli for a solution. When he hears that Baron had contacts in the city, he tries the ring and talks to Vera, who immediately hangs up on him. At that moment a bee flies by and Yuli immediately follows it to find the beehive. Honey is rare nowadays, so Julie's brings the hive down to fill a jar, and the bees end up stinging him multiple times. In the evening he meets with Vera and gives her the honey, but instead of asking for electricity, he asks to be sent back to two hills. Nearby, Baron and Krissa are scavenging for food and end up finding a car plus a skeleton with a gun. Then they fix the power and return to the slums, where they regain power thanks to the gun. When the squirrels come by to pick up a fight, Baron tries to stop them with his gun, but they have bigger weapons and aren't scared. To make them leave, Baron lets them have Krissa. In the meantime, Elena makes Jera help a dead bird's eggs hatch to improve his reputation with the local women as part of her campaign. 
At that moment, everyone receives a ring message asking them to look at the news. The group does so and discovers Yuli complaining about the way men live, blaming Jera for getting lost while on the job. Jera tries to share the truth, but the women don't believe him and abandon him. Afterward, Yuli is welcomed back as a seed keeper, and Vera orders Rada to serve Yuli until he's healthy again. While Rada takes care of Yuli, he confesses that he lied and only said those things because Vera made him too. Rada promises that Elena can help Yuli if he keeps up this honesty later, and he reluctantly agrees. After Rada leaves, Jera arrives to call Yuli out for his lies, but all his cursing causes his social points to go down and he's forced to stop. Yuli just leaves and Jera destroys an apple in anger. Later, when Jera returns to his apartment with Rada and Elena, he's surprised to see the councilwomen waiting. They're here to accuse Jera of destroying an apple, which is the symbol of their society and therefore blasphemy. The video is even played on national TV so everyone can see it. After 100 social points are taken from his wallet, Jera is also accused of harassment, so more points are taken and his wallet reaches zero. The council gets ready to kick Jera out, but at the last second, he receives a point from an anonymous donation. At that moment the birds hatch, so a bunch of women start donating points too as thanks for his help. The council has no choice but to leave. Sometime later, Jera puts on what he considers nice clothes and tries to flirt with Rada, even donating a point to her beauty. However Rada snaps and yells at him, blaming him for always getting her into trouble. As her anger grows, she asks him to stay away from her and leaves. Upset by this, Jera leaves a letter at Rada's door and makes his way to the colony's borders, where he waits until hugging time to offer the guard a hug and steal her device. Then he disables the barrier and runs out of the colony, so the guard immediately blows her whistle to send a drone after him. Keeping an eye on the drone prevents Jera from seeing an oncoming vehicle, so he's hit by it and ends up in the hospital. At her house Rada finds the letter, which has an apology and a goodbye from Jera. Meanwhile Vera asks Baron to make his men attack two hills. The next day, Jera is already better and gets discharged, so Rada and Elena take him to Vera's motherhood function, during which the next woman to get inseminated will be chosen. When Jera and Elena ask her, Rada admits she wants to be a mother. As part of her campaign plans, Vera challenges Elena to try all the events games, but her plan backfires when Elena defeats her at every single opportunity. In the meantime Rada and Ia go to Zoya's secret theater where she's playing a naughty video to show how real people use to get pregnant. Rada is horrified because it looks like the woman is being tortured and quickly walks away. Then she bumps into Jera, who offers to make a baby the natural way instead of waiting to be chosen by the lottery. Rada is disgusted by the idea, but Ia likes it and asks Jera to do it to her. Jera looks at Rada for permission and since she says he can do anything he wants, Jera agrees to do it with Ia later. Next, everyone gathers to hear the lottery winners and Rada is surprised to hear she's won. At the same time, Ia takes Jera to her place and tries to replicate what she saw in the videos, but Jera finds it cringy and leaves. He decides to return to the event where Rada is giving a speech, but she interrupts herself when she sees him. Realizing her feelings, Rada turns down the lottery prize and begins walking toward Jera. Suddenly Baron breaks in with his men in the old car. They immediately kidnap Rada and begin destroying the whole place while looking for more women to mate with, causing chaos and all the women to run away. Once he has Elena and Rada, Baron looks for his payment, only to find an empty box. He calls Vera for an explanation, but Vera says he knows too much and must go. At that moment Vera's guards surround the gang and point their guns at them, so one of the guys makes a milk bottle explode to distract them. As the gang and Rada run away, Baron keeps Elena hostage at gunpoint and uses her as a shield to escape as well. They hide inside the mother center, where all the seed is kept. Baron wants to ask for a reward in exchange for Elena's life, but Elena explains Vera will be happy to lose the competition. Now they're locked there, and a furious Baron starts blaming Vera for everything. Hearing this, Elena offers to take him out if he confesses the truth about Vera to the authorities, and he agrees. Then Elena and Baron leave the building with the box containing all the seed capsules. When the guards try to stop them, Baron keeps them away by breaking some of the capsules, giving him the chance to escape. Back to Baron's men, they capture Zoya and make her take them to her house, where they let go of her and ask for some food. Zoya picks a crossbow from her drawer and aims it at them, only to then befriend them because she also wants to fight for equal rights. In the meantime Rada is almost caught by a gang member, but Jera saves her and they run together to hide inside a house. However the house AI refuses to obey Rada's orders because she and Elena have been denied all the colony privileges. The duo then checks the TV and learns that Vera is blaming everything on Jera, so they guess she's behind the attack. They want to run away again, but the house won't open the door. Jera and Rada end up getting closer and share a kiss. The house AI tries to tell them to stop, but they just ignore it. This rebellion confuses the system and forces it to restore its default settings, so when Rada hears this, she uses the chance to register herself as a new member of the colony. Now the house obeys and opens the door for them to escape. While Baron tells Elena about all the illegal things Vera is guilty of, Zoya and her new gang break into Vera's home and try to attack her. However Yuli comes in her defense, quickly beating all the guys up in seconds so they can get arrested. 
Soon a whole army of security officers find Elena and Baron, but thankfully they're also found by Jera and Rada in the old car. After dropping all the capsules, a furious Baron drags Jera out and hits him for starting this whole mess, then he gets in the car to escape. Worried about Jera, Rada tries to fight him for the wheel, causing the vehicle to fall off the road and get stuck in a muddy river. The whole group except Jera immediately gets arrested, and Vera celebrates by doing the naughty with Yuli while the prisoners are given the punishment of cleaning the Pacific Ocean. Afterward, newscasts report the destruction of all the seeds, which makes a seed keeper called Lucius cry. Suddenly he's startled by Jera and attacks him for his betrayal, but Jera convinces him to help when he tells him the truth about Vera and Baron. Then Jera tells him about the barrier, and Lucius reveals he has a bicycle. They get on it together and by pedaling really fast, they manage to go 80 kilometers an hour, successfully crossing the barrier around the colony. The next day, Jera and Lucius meet with Jera's grandfather and start making a plan. Lucius calls one of his seed keeper friends and learns about the punishment in the Pacific Ocean. Jera notices his grandfather has a college picture with Zoya, and hearing she's alive makes the old man so happy that he brings out a laptop to trace her location. Meanwhile the prisoners are taken to an apple orchard, where Vera reveals their real punishment will be working there as slaves. Soon Jera, his grandfather, and Yuli also make it to the orchard, but a barrier is protecting the area. At that moment they see the squirrels arrive and they're allowed to get in because they bring more slaves like Krissa for Vera's plans. Krissa lies to Baron, saying he's glad to be there because it's better than the slums. He also says that using the trash cans may be a good idea to escape and Baron believes him so he hides in the trash. When the squirrels leave, they stop in the middle of the road when they find Jera pretending to be a drunk hobo. They immediately capture him and take him to Katya, who adopts Jera as one of his naughty dogs. Later Katya takes all his dogs with her to visit Vera at the orchard, and the dogs are tied up outside while the women share dinner. Jera sees Rada and gives her Lucius ring so she can record the crimes happening here. In the evening while Vera and Katya have a party with the dogs, Rada sneaks into their tent and tries to record everything. However the party is interrupted when Yuli recognizes Jera because of his tattoo. Vera pushes him away in disgust and the movement moves away the curtains, revealing Rada as well. The guards immediately take them both outside and take the ring, only to discover a few pictures of the party did reach the colony. Vera has no choice but to go back to do damage control. In the colony, Ia shows the leaked pictures of Vera and Claudia to other women, only to be interrupted by Vera saying the pictures are fake. Both Vera and Ia start biting on an apple to swear they're telling the truth, so a Supreme Mother decides to make an investigation before making any decisions. Now Vera has to rush to her office to destroy all the party stuff she keeps hidden, but the Supreme Mother still wants to investigate the area around the colony. With no other choice, Vera orders for the orchid to be burned down. Meanwhile Chris's lie accidentally becomes true and Baron manages to escape when an employee takes away the trash cans to be emptied. He jumps out of the can and runs through the forest, where he meets with Jera's grandfather and Julius. At the orchard, Zoya notices Yuli is interested in Rada and convinces her to flirt with him. Yuli falls for it and takes Rada to his tent, where he informs her that Vera has ordered to burn down the orchard. At that moment he's knocked out by Jera, who at the same time is found by the squirrels. The gang gets ready to punish Jera and Rada but is interrupted by the arrival of the trash truck, from which the Baron emerges with a weapon. He shoots down a squirrel and the others back away in fear, giving the prisoners the chance to free themselves. Suddenly Vera presses a button, and the whole orchid goes down in a quick explosion. Sometime later, Vera is elected the new leader of the colony. During the ceremony, her celebration is interrupted by some advertisement, making her realize that she's been arrested and connected to the thought machine. The Supreme Mother never trusted her and captured her as soon as she entered Vera's office. The button was never pressed, the prisoners have escaped safely, Elena is elected new leader, and Jera and Rada finally have their first time together. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.